This project is in fulfillment of course ETEC 540 as part of the Masters of Educational Technology program at the University of British Columbia. For my project that involved the telegraph, I was amazed at being able to find books published in the mid-19th century. They often referred to the time of the telegraph still being in its infancy. One of the sources for this project was a book by Edward Hyten. The author's preface in the book is dated 1852. Hyten begins his book with the statement, What an age of wonders is this! The history of instant communication at a distance from ancient times begins with beacon or signal fires. This involved an agreed code of what these signals meant. Still used today, the international signal for distress is three fires in a triangular formation. Another example of where this type of communication was used is on the Great Wall of China. It most likely did not take long for messengers to tire of running back and forth between these towers. These were abandoned with the introduction of the aerial or semigraph tower. Of course, these are the first attempts at communication from a distance and that eventually led to the use of email and texting that we use so much today. The semaphore system uses flag signs for the letters of the alphabet, numbers, and punctuation such as spaces. The towers with their semaphore signals could be seen at a distance with the use of a telescope. The aerial telegraphs were used in a number of countries between 1795 and 1835. The inventions of one of the early engineers, Claude Schapp, were met with great opposition. His first and second optical telegraph stations, beginning in 1791, were destroyed by the populace, burned to the ground, and his life was threatened with a similar fate. But of course they had limitations as they could not be used for a large part of the year due to weather conditions as well as darkness. Telegraph signals sent over electrical wires overcame these obstacles. An example of a semaphore telegraph still in use today is located on a railway line in Ventura, California. The electric telegraph as well was met with resistance, criticized for being costly and not practical. In 1809 in Bavaria, Samuel Sommering invented a crude electrochemical telegraph, as can be seen from the image, with various corresponding wires to the letters of the alphabet, where the red arrow is pointing. Much activity occurred with inventions and patents being filed in the early to mid-19th century. Hyten, in his book from 1852, notes 21 different variations of the telegraph prior to 1838. From the production of electricity through magnetism, transmission through water, insulating the wires, and the ability to have it transmitted over long distances were all developments that helped perfect the telegraph. The invention of the telegraph cannot be attributed to any one person since so many uh, contributed to it. The variations of inventions of the telegraph were many, with dials to indicate the letters to piano keys to tap them out. In 1774, George Lesage in Geneva uses 24 wires and a pitball electrometer. 1825, William Sturgeon develops the strong horseshoe magnet and the use of bare copper wires. Then in 1835, Joseph Henry's research into electromagnetics lead to the ability to send electricity over great distances by insulating those copper wires. 1832, just prior to this, Samuel Morse receives a patent for his telegraph machine that used a printing and recording device. In 1836, Morse code was invented with the use for the use with the telegraph. 1837, Sir William Father Cook and Charles Wheatstone invented telegraph, the electric telegraph in England and sent the first message. J. 
generally invented for railway safety. Cook and Wheatstone's line opened as the first true public telegraph between Paddington and Slough in the UK, and it was used to apprehend a murderer. The first line was constructed from Washington to Baltimore in the U.S. for $30,000, 40 miles, in 1843. 1844, news of Henry Clay's political nomination for presidency by the Whig Convention in Baltimore was the first telegraph in America. Across the Atlantic, same year, Queen Victoria's announcement of the birth of her son, Alfred, transmitted to the Times within 40 minutes of, a, of his birth. 1858, the transatlantic telegraph cable was laid, financed by Cirrus Field West, an American financier. The first transatlantic telegraph in the UK was Queen Victoria to the US President Buchanan. None of this could have been done without William Sturgeon's discovery of electromagnetics. His invention involved copper wires round around an iron bar, creating a magnet that increased the force of the electricity. Previously, electricity could only be transmitted about 200 yards. Joseph Henry and Michael Faraday also contributed much work in the area of electromagnetics. Henry, as mentioned earlier, by insulating the copper wires. Concurrent to the advances in the development of the electric telegraph were discoveries and improvement in electricity itself, as well as the Telefax machine or electric printing telegraph, which was developed between 1843 and 1865, 11 years before the invention of the telephone. The Telefax was primarily for image transmission, the telegraph for text transmission. The electric telegraph required both a sending instrument on one end and a receiving instrument on the other. The illustrations above and on the right show the paper tape that recorded the message. Samuel Morse missed his wife's funeral due to a delayed communication, so he was obsessed with instant communication. In a sense, Morse worked on the software rather than the hardware. Much like binary code, which uses ones and zeros, Morse code uses on and off, or dits and daws. The code relies on intervals between the dots and dashes. The more common the letter, the fewer elements. Compare the E on this chart, which is common, to the letter Q. It has many more elements to it. The messages can be received by clicks, tones or lights, which are interpreted either by machine or a skilled Morse code interpreter. Morse's early telegraph used a pen, but that was abandoned for a steel pricker. It made small holes in the paper or formed long scratches, refer referred to as dits and daws, as I mentioned earlier. His first message read, What had God wrought? And here's an example of Chinese Morse code. Original telegraph printed messages on paper tape, but in America, machines eventually sent messages by key and were received by ear. A trained Morse code operator could transmit 40 to 50 words per minute. Here's an interesting picture of the exterior of the CN telegraph station in 1942. The role of the telegraph in social change. At its dedication in 1858, President Buchanan was quoted as saying, May the telegraph, under the blessing of heaven, prove to be a bond of perpetual peace and friendship between the kindred nations and an instrument destined by divine providence to diffuse religion, liberty, and law throughout the world. Morse code was the first new alphabet created since the Phoenicians drafted the alphabet. It eliminates speech tones and social class. Lubrano, in her book of 1997, says our maker is preparing the world for one nation when armies are no longer necessary. The governor of New York in 1871, John T. Hoffman, gives Samuel Morris credit for allowing men to speak with one another, with one language across the width of the earth, all at the speed of lightning. 
Prior to the telegraph, it was considered good social form for people to visit each other on the holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, as well as the transmission of bad news. But now they could just send a telegraph. In the 19th century, life was very localized. Local events and human interest stories were not published in the newspaper, as they were still more commonly communicated by word of mouth and often not considered newsworthy. Political debates were held orally, but statements of political positions and unfolding of political developments dominated the newspapers. Even foreign news from Europe was often received long after events. With the introduction of the telegraph, these items could be communicated instantaneously and would dominate the headlines. The implications for education. In her paper, Harrison attributes the invention of the telegraph more than 150 years ago as one of four truly revolutionary events in communication technology, along with writing 5,000 years ago, printing, 500 years ago, and now computer communication. It is the instantaneous aspect of the telegraph that made it so revolutionary. No longer would key public events need to be communicated through a time-consuming postal system. The telegraph was considered the great highway of thought. However, although urgent news was communicated rapidly, it did not take long for the discovery that false information transmitted over the telegraph could just as easily happen and the consequential effects this could have. In 1861, the American government assumed exclusive military control over the lines owned by the American Telegraph Company as they realized this was the most powerful means of communication. The telegraph was the forerunner to email communication which was and still is a primary method of distributed learning. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.